Dave Henry and this is my shop. In the last video of this series I discussed the interesting enclosed forms available from the six side bird mouth router bit. Uh, here we're going to talk about the equally interesting and different range of shapes that the eight side router bit can provide. I'll close by showing how such eight-side birdmouth joinery can lead to practical and easily available projects such as a gift quality napkin holder and a very cool jewelry box. Let's go. Here's some quick clips of what they look like. I'll get to the details in a few minutes. By way of review, uh, here's a look at my eight side router bit. Nothing really special there. Uh, it cuts a V groove in the edge of stock, as here. There's that V groove. And the next piece in the eight sided shape that you're building fits tightly into it, forming a uh, very good uh, glue joint. Uh, when you got eight of these, as I've assembled here, uh, they form this the eight-sided shape you're going after and it's a very tight rigid form. It's uh, easy to glue and uh, very strong. Here is a set of eight-sided shapes built from redwood and maple to illustrate the stave width story that I'm trying to tell. As with the six-side bit, you can change the length of pairs of sides such as these uh, without altering the joint angles here and here that provide the tight fit and strong glue joints between staves. Uh, this is the regular octagon um, and with all staves being the same width. As a simple example of what I'm talking about, visualize shortening say these two staves from two inches down to one inch. I've done that of course. Uh, and here it is. This uh, here are the two one-inch staves now, and these remain the same. And yet we've changed the shape to a distinctive diamond form. Uh, alternatively, we could talk about uh, lengthening staves like those two. And in this piece, I've done so. There, these staves are two inches here and they're five inches here. And this is what you get. A very interesting and useful oval form. This oval form served as the model for the jewelry box project that I'll be describing in a moment. Mixing long staves and short staves uh, in a form gives many useful shapes. Uh, for example, uh, in this piece I've used three short sets held uh, together with one long set and it provides this interesting lozenge shape. And this is the basis for the napkin holder project that I'll be describing uh, in a few moments. Um, in this piece, two short stave sets, that's the corners in this form, uh, and two long work, longer ones, uh, seven inches, five inches, give this very useful, potentially very useful, rectangular shape. Uh, why is that so interesting? Well, rectangular shapes are the basis for most woodworking projects, at least that most of us undertake. And birdmouth joinery, which is so easily accessible, can be applied to the construction of many of them. To bring the subject to a close, here are the last two new shapes that I'll talk about. They're chosen almost at random and assembled from the same parts as the forms that you've already seen. They're less symmetrical than previous shapes, but the rule still holds. If opposite pairs of staves are the same length. Joint angles don't change and the resulting eight-sided shape locks tightly together with strong glue joints. And the key point of all of this 
is that all of these constructions are easily and quickly fabricated using bird mouth joinery. One final point before getting to the specific projects. Uh, to demonstrate this point, I'm going to make an eight-sided box similar to this one, but with a useful new wrinkle that adds to the versatility of bird mouth joinery. This box form was made from parts taken from the demo set we've been looking at thus far. Every stave, uh, look at this one for example, has a V groove on one side and a square edge on the other. Well, interestingly, if you just turn the piece over, not changing anything really, uh, the V groove on this piece is now on this side and the square edge is now on this side. This leads to the thought that why not put two grooves on this one stave, that would be one here and one here, and the result would be you wouldn't need any V grooves on the next piece. So we have two V grooves here and here and here and here, then we have four pieces with no uh, V grooves cut in them at all. Uh, that doesn't change the angles any. The strength of the piece will not be affected. Uh, but there are some definite advantages to doing this. So let's try it and maybe we can cut some wood in the process. Okay, here's what we need. Router table, eight-sided bit, stock cut to the dimensions we need. This stock is about one half inch thick. Okay, here's the parts we just cut, and here they are, loosely assembled. Here they are, hopefully. Uh, uh, finally assembled. Well, we'll have to make an adjustment here. There we go. Okay, why is this small joinery change important? For one thing, the joint pattern through here has become more symmetrical, and symmetry is often more pleasing to the eye than asymmetry. And of course, with many woodworking projects, the joint pattern is a prominent part of the design, and this gives you more flexibility. Another important gain from this pattern change is that four these ones of the eight staves remain square and unchanged from the original stock, and they can therefore assume other uses in project design because they do not have the potentially unsightly exposed grooves in one side as they would have otherwise. Uh, as a simple example, uh, think of how this box might look with short legs. Well, that could be done simply by increasing this stave length. And of course, we did that when we were preparing the parts for this little demonstration, and here's what it looks like. Okay, let's now have a look at those specific projects. This napkin holder project was based on this lozenge form that was discussed earlier in the video. The similarity is obvious when you look at the napkin holder from the bottom. It is made with uh, walnut and with maple, and the stock is 3 8 inch thick. In essence, uh, it is a topless box made initially with a square profile on the top 
and was rounded off by bandsaw and sanding after assembly. The bottom is inside here, the bottom is one quarter inch walnut veneer ply and is held in place by three sixteenths inch dados around the inside of the bottom here. Uh, this is the way that drawer bottoms are commonly built. The bottom piece itself was shaped by tracing around the clamped but unglued body of the box. That is, it was traced onto the plywood stock and then the tracing was simply reduced in size by 3 sixteenths of an inch all the way around in order that the bottom would fit into the slotted space made for it. The piece was assembled around that bottom and was finished with clear wipe-on polyurethane uh, over a shellac undercoat. Uh, this napkin holder has been in use in our breakfast nook for quite some time and it works very well. This 13 inch box is based on the uh, oval form that uh, we described earlier. There's the comparison. Uh, and at first glance, uh, this box uh, looks very different uh, from this napkin holder. But, in fact, they are quite similar because of their shared bird mouth joinery construction. And I'm going to compare them to emphasize those similarities. Aside from uh, both being made largely from walnut, uh, both were constructed using the two-groove, no-groove, alternating stave pattern. I'm going to explain that. Uh, that is, this stave has two grooves in it, this stave has none, this two, none, and so on. And for the box, this uh, choice of design uh, permitted a, a design with legs, short legs, and the inclusion easy inclusion of this holly accent. But the basic construction is identical. Eight staves around the periphery of alternating woods with only, only differing in the width of the staves. But the construction is identical. The box, of course, has a lid, but both lid and body were constructed uh, by exactly the same process as an napkin holder. Uh, a dado groove around the interior to accept the top panel and also the bottom panel, of course. The lid panel was fabricated from one half inch walnut with the inserted holly and ebony strips and uh, then plain to a quarter inch thickness. And the equivalent bottom panel is one quarter inch walnut veneer ply. And the panels were cut, these panels top and bottom, were cut to shape by the tracing technique again described earlier for the bottom of the napkin holder. Okay, that's what I wanted to say right now at any rate about the eight-side birdmouth rubber bit. Along with the six-side bit, it's a very versatile tool for constructing a wide variety of wood projects. And, most importantly, birdmouth joinery is very simple. It allows quick access to many quality projects that ordinarily would take substantial skill in the classical techniques such as dovetails and mortise and tenon. Give it a try. I think you'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching.